Happy Monday! Welcome back to Drinking By My Shelf. My name is Emma and today this video is about books that I have recently become interested in. So I completely stole this video idea from Rather Be Reading. I will link to her videos below. She does this one every month, I think, where she looks at the books that she has added that month to her Goodreads TBR. And I just really like those videos. It's really interesting to see which books are just getting onto people's radars. So I thought I would do the same thing. It is kind of funny posting this literally like three days after I just posted Trash My TBR because there is always the chance that a lot of these books will one day end up being trashed by you guys on Trash My TBR and I will never read them. But hopefully they don't meet that fate because these are all books that I thought sounded really interesting. So I'm not doing this necessarily all the books I've added this month because I haven't really kept track of that. I'm just gonna work through my Goodreads TBR from most recent and just kind of see how far we get. So the most recent book that I added to my Goodreads TBR is The Night Bookmobile by Audrey Niffenegger. I have read two Audrey Niffenegger, Niff, Niffenegger, Niffenegger books before. The Time Traveller's Wife, which I've read multiple, multiple times. It's one of my all-time favourites. I love it. Makes me cry every single time. I've also read Her Fearful Symmetry, which was nowhere near as good. I haven't read it in years. I'm actually quite interested in rereading it and seeing how I feel a second time around because I was probably 16, 17 when I first read it and I was so excited because it was a new book by my the author of my favourite book and so I had this like massive disappointment that I didn't like it as much. Whereas now, going into it with different expectations, I might enjoy it. Who knows? What I remember of the storyline was that it was very weird. It was about twins and ghosts and who really knows what else and who cares because it's not the book I'm supposed to be talking about right now. The book I was trying to talk about was The Night Bookmobile. What's cool about this book is that this is a graphic novel, which I have recently been getting pretty into graphic novels. I still haven't read that many, but I've been really enjoying them. And this is the story of a young woman who encounters a mysterious disappearing mobile library that happens to stock every book she's ever read. So it's about like her exploring her history through the books that she's read. And I love that kind of thing. I love books about books. Half love Audrey Niffenegger's books out of the ones that I've read. I like her kind of weird style and I like graphic novels. So the ratings aren't great. I hadn't actually looked at that um, when I added it to my TBR, but I'm just opening it now and saying that all the people I follow who've read it I've given it like, Kelly gave it two stars, Jean gave it two stars. That's not looking great, but I'm interested in that one. Moving on. The next book that I added is After the Silence by Louise O'Neill. So I'm really behind with my Louise O'Neill. I read and absolutely loved Only Ever Yours and Asking For It. I didn't get round to reading The Little Mermaid Retelling. I forgot what it was called, but I haven't read that yet. I also haven't yet read Almost Love, that was actually featured in the most recent Trash My TBR um, because it's one that I really really want to read. And now there is a new book, so I've got loads to catch up on. This is After the Silence and this I believe is her first thriller. So this, as far as I can tell, is about a documentary investigating a 10 year old murder case when no one was ever charged with the murder, um, but it happened on this island and all of the islanders are kind of they all know who to blame and I guess they're kind of keeping the secret. That sounds so different from Louise O'Neill's other books so far and you know me, I love a thriller, so really excited for that one. Okay, then I added The Alice Network by Kate Quinn. So again, this is what I added while researching for book break. I do these videos on book break where people can request like overly specific things that they're looking for in books, they can send that to my Instagram and then I try and find them a book that has all of those elements. And so this one I recommended for someone who was looking for a Kate Morton-esque dual timeline story, um, but where the past section was in the 1910s. So I was researching for that when I found The Alice Network, which is dual timeline, it's set between the 1910s and the 1940s, I believe. And in each part, we have a young woman that we're following. So in the 1910s section, it's during World War One, and we meet this young woman who is becoming a spy. And then in the 1940s section, it's just after World War II, and we meet this young socialite who is pregnant and not married and about to be kicked out of her family, and she is searching for her cousin who went missing. Um, and these storylines are gonna come together. Possibly the woman from the first one is the cousin. That was my first thought from the synopsis, but who knows. Then I added The Amber Shadows by Lucy Ribchester. So I was re-looking at old Goodreads reviews and actually one of the first videos I made, before I made YouTube videos, I used to do Snapchat book reviews and then upload those. I would like download them from Snapchat and upload them to YouTube. So they like 
look terrible because it's all like the wrong way around. Um, but I did one for The Hourglass Factory by Lucy Ribchester, which is a book I think I was sent to review back in the day. And I liked it, but didn't love it. So it was this really cool, like, feminist um, mystery about a circus performer. And our main character is a journalist, and we see her, like, facing sexism in the world of journalism and trying to investigate the mystery of this circus performer's disappearance. And there were so many things going on, like you get the suffragettes, you get um, the sinking of the Titanic, you get Jack the Ripper, you get circus and tigers and like all of this stuff. And in my Goodreads review I had written that it was absolutely fantastic mystery, such a great plot, so page turning but just too long. And so long that I couldn't quite keep track of who everyone was, so that when the mysteries were revealed it took quite a lot of like flicking back in the book to figure out what the significance was but that when I did piece it all together it was amazing. So I'd written in there um, that I hadn't quite loved it but I was really really excited to see what that author wrote next and then I'd just forgotten about it and hadn't looked. So I immediately after reading that clicked through to look at the author Lucy Ribchester's Goodreads page and saw that she had this new book, I forgot what it's called already, called The Amber Shadows. Well I say new, apparently it came out in 2016 but new to me. So this is about a Bletchley Park typist I think it's going to be another of her amazing mysteries with loads of shit going on, but maybe it'll work slightly better for me this time. Again, it doesn't have the best reviews. So The Hourglass Factory, which is the first one I read, has a 3.28 average rating, and this one has a 3.09. No, a 3.07. But you know what? We're going to give it a go. Okay, then I added Three Hours by Rosamond Lupton. So this one I added because last time I saw Sophie, my sister, she was reading it and said that I think she like stayed up all night reading it because it was so page turning. So of course I took her recommendation. Oh, that one has great Goodreads reviews. The extraordinary new novel everyone is talking about apparently. I haven't heard anyone talk about it except for my sister, but she did love it. I think it's about a school shooting. I've read a few books about school shootings, they are incredibly stressful and incredibly sad, but I think when done well can be brilliant. What's interesting here is that this is about a school shooting in Somerset, um, and I don't think I've read any school shooting books set in the UK before, because it is, it's such a rare thing here. It's, I imagine the experience of reading books about that topic is very different if you're from the US, because it's, it's such a fear there, whereas here, it's practically unheard of. Um, we had a school shooting in the 80s, which led to gun laws being really changed, and we haven't had one since, I don't think. Wikipedia literally has two entries. There was one in 1850, and then there was Dunblane. I said the 80s, it was actually the 90s. In 1996, we had a terrible shooting at a primary school, um, and I just, I don't think it's happened since. So the experience of reading about school shootings is, I imagine, very different because it doesn't feel like such a real fear here. But it's very interesting that this book is about, hypothetically, what happened if there was a school shooting in Somerset. Okay, the next one down I literally don't even remember adding, even though it can't have been very long ago. All of these were within the last month or like six weeks max. I added one called The End of Men by Christina Sweeney Baird. It doesn't come out until 2021 and I can't remember where I heard of it and why I added it. But it does sound great. It says it's set in a world where a virus stalks our male population. So it asks the question, what would our world truly look like without men? Interesting. So it's set in 2025 and this mysterious virus has broken out in Scotland that only affects men. It's a female doctor who first reports the phenomenon and she is dismissed as hysterical. <laughs> Classic. So by the time people actually take her serious, it's too late. The men are being wiped out. Wow. I mean, that sounds so cool, and I don't know how I've already forgotten where I heard of it and where I put it in. But moving on, I'll finish here with four, which I'll put together. I added four Persephone books to my TBR. They are a publisher who publish out of print, mostly female writers from the early 20th century. Um, so sometimes it's republishing books that were initially published and then kind of forgotten about. Sometimes it's discovering old manuscripts that were never paid attention to. And it's all about kind of shining a light on these stories that weren't given the space at the time, like weren't considered important, but Persephone are now looking back and finding these beautiful stories. And I have quite a few of them on my TBR. I have only read three, I think, three Persephone books so far, and they've all been five stars. I'm always really intimidated about reading them because they're like these old classics and they have these beautiful grey covers. I should get some out. I'll film some in a minute. You'll see them up there. They're all together. They look gorgeous. 
and I always hesitate to pick them up in case I'm going to find them, like this quite heavy read. And I never do, they're always so accessible, so readable, so emotional, so I love them. So I recently watched a booktube video from Miranda Mills, who talked about her favourite Persephone books, and it was a great sign, because in the video she included all of the ones that I have read and loved, so obviously our tastes overlap there, and so I added a bunch more of her recommendations to my list. So just in brief, I will tell you. It was Guard Your Daughters by Diana Tutton. So this one is about a family of five daughters and a mother who sounds like she is quite troubled and the family are constantly trying to avoid upsetting her, but they do it all in quite a light-hearted, cheerful fashion. We have The Expendable Man by Dorothy B. Hughes. That one is a crime novel. What fun! I love some crime, so let's look at some older crime. Um, then we have The Blank Wall by Elizabeth Sanxe Holding. This is about a suburban matron harassed by wartime domestic problems who finds herself implicated in the murder of her young daughter's extremely unattractive beau. Fun, another murder one. And finally, Mariana by Monica Dickens. Oh, it's compared to I Capture the Castle, which is definitely why I added it. I love I Capture the Castle. So this is the story of a young English girl's growth towards maturity in the 1930s. So we see her growing up, going to drama school, getting engaged to the wrong man. It says it's a hot water bottle novel, one to curl up with on the sofa on a wet Sunday afternoon. That sounds so lovely. So there you go, a little selection of the books that have caught my interest recently, enough for me to add them to my Goodreads TBR, and fingers crossed they don't all end up on the trash pile one day. I will hopefully actually read them all pretty soon. So what books have caught your attention recently? Do let me know if there's anything on your radar that should be on my radar. And I will see you guys soon. Happy Monday.